Hey guys, this is with Nursing School Made Easy. Today's lecture is going to focus on fractured ribs. Now, if you look at the images at the very beginning of the video, those are that's a uh, chest CT with 3D reconstruction. So that's going to give you um, a look at what ribs look like. So please make sure you re refer to that to those images as we're going along fractured ribs and our lecture on flail chest. So let's get right to it. Um, the ribs that are most likely or more prone to fracture are ribs 5 through 10. Now again, these are the most commonly fractured ribs. Okay, ribs 5 through 10. So let's jump right in and make this lecture very, very brief. <clears throat> Clinical manifestations. Some of your signs and symptoms. Number one, chest pain. Now this chest pain is going to increase during any time the patient coughs or during deep breathing or inspiration. Okay, again, chest pain is going to increase any time there's coughing or inspiration. That's very important for you to know. Now, since this patient does have this chest pain, especially during inspiration, it's going to make it very, very difficult for these patients to take very, very deep breaths. As a result of not taking deep breaths in, this makes it very, very likely for the patient to suffer from atelectasis or collapse of those alveoli, okay? Again, you would see atelectasis in these patients, and again, that patient not taking those deep breaths in is going to make it, again, very, very likely for that patient to suffer from pneumonia. Again, <clears throat> this is due to retained secretions. They can't cough up anything. So again, it makes it more likely for these patients to suffer from pneumonia. So what are some treatments? For these patients. Number one, most important of all is adequate pain control. Now, I don't know if you've ever had fractured ribs or not, but this is very, very painful. Again, anytime you take a deep breath, anytime you breathe, period, it's going to be extremely painful. So make sure you provide adequate pain control to these patients or for these patients. Also make sure that you educate them. If it's going to be PO pain medication, it's gonna take 30 to 45 minutes before pain medicine kicks in. Now, it's going to peak at about one to two hours. <clears throat> and typically you're gonna be giving pain medication every four to six, so make sure, again, patient is aware to take uh, pain medicine as soon as they feel some pain starting to pop up because if they're in severe pain, the last thing they wanna do is wait till it gets even worse because again pain medication if it's PO it's gonna take about 30 to 45 minutes for it to kick in so again make sure that you provide adequate pain control number two <clears throat> you have to know this because every time I've seen any type of fracture on TV on movies they always um, tape or provide some type of binder to the chest in this case you do not want to do that so no taping or no binding of the chest, okay? The reason you do not put any tape or you do not bind the chest is because again, that's going to limit the amount of chest expansion. And if you prevent the chest from moving, from expanding, you're only going to, excuse me, you're only going to increase the likelihood of atelectasis and pneumonia. Therefore, you make sure that you tell that patient to not tape it, to not bind it, okay? Number three, you're going to encourage these patients after adequate pain control, of course, to take deep breaths, to cough, to use your IS. You wanna make sure that they ambulate. Okay, again, the purpose of IS, deep breathing, coughing, is to prevent atelectasis and pneumonia.